Hello. The Lord bless you this late night. I bring greetings from you all the way from Port Harcourt City in Nigeria. Greetings from Lord Jesus Christ unto you this night. Before we hear God's word this night, let us have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, tonight, O oh Lord, our hearts are prepared for your word, undiluted word. The Lord, Father, Lord, you will change the heart of men and women. You will direct their hearts that the fire, O oh Lord, of heaven, spiritual ignition, she are born upon every life. That you return the zeal, O oh Lord. The zeal, O oh Lord, Father of the early church. The zeal of the Lord. That you might be able to be rekindled in the lives of your people through the word. Holy Spirit, have your way. The mighty rushing wind that came in the book of Acts chapter 2. And up to now, the word has not recovered from it. Minister to us this night. That the name of the Lord alone shall be glorified, sanctify the environment with blood of Jesus Christ. Powers of darkness within Port Harcourt, city of Nigeria. Every forces of darkness that is operational, hearing the voice of the word of God this morning, this night. Let every of your powers be paralyzed. Release those that are your captives tonight. Let the word of God come and let the light of the word of God break every form of yoke of ignorance of darkness in the lives of the people. That at the end of the day, the name of the Lord shall be glorified. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's most powerful name, we are prayed. Amen. Let's worship God. The water so my soul panted after thee. You alone are my heart. Desire and I love to worship you. You alone are my strength and shield, and you alone make my spirit yield. You alone are my heart. Desire and I long to worship you. As a dear Panted for the water, so my soul panted after thee. You alone are my heart, desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength and shield, and you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart, desire, and I long to worship you. Thank you, Lord. You alone, our heart, desire to worship. As a dear panted after the water, let our lives, O oh Lord, begin to pant after you henceforth. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. We have worshipped. Amen. I bring greetings once again unto you this night. The word of God that is coming unto us today is very important. Very important. Be desperate for God. Be desperate for God. Desperation is, I define it as a spiritual zeal. Spiritual zeal. Be so zealous. Be so desperate for God. The world may look at you as if you are a mad person. In fact, if your Christianity has not got into the point of people telling you that you are mad, you have not started. That was what Agrippa told Paul. He said, too much learning has made you to become mad. You nearly made me to become a Christian. Paul said, not just you. I desire that everyone shall be a Christian. Everyone shall be the way I am, even you. Except the bond you put on me is what I don't want people to be, to, to be upon them. The handcuff that you put upon me. 
So until you get to a point when people begin to tell you that you own too much, you've not started Christianity. Zealous, zealousness. Be desperate for God. He pays. He pays. This will not come with the Christianity cannot take us anywhere. This being in between. Elijah, Elijah asked the children of Israel when he called on fire. Before he called, he said, listen, when shall you be in between? When shall you be in between? Between God and devil? He said, if God is your God, serve him. If he's not your God, leave him alone. He has no friends in the spirit. It's either you are with God or you are with Satan. So we need to tell ourselves the truth. This half-baked Christianity will not take us anywhere. That's why that's the reason why a lot of people are frustrated. And they are called Christians and they are frustrated. Some people will start asking, ah, okay, then what is happening? What is happening to him? He has been he has been a Christian. She has been a Christian. But we need to show the fruit of that Christianity. One of the fruit of that Christianity is for you to be desperate for God. Be desperate for God. And I say that your desperation for God or towards God is what will determine the value or the presence of God that he has attached onto your life. What you are to God is what God is unto you. God cannot be more than who you think or who you have given him a chance to be in your life. If you are desperate towards God, if you are serious with God, God will be serious with you. The level at which you value God is the level which God values you also. We need to tell ourselves the truth. So the word of God is coming to us and it's time to be desperate. Be desperate for God. That's the only way to please God. God desires that you should be loved. You see, God desires that we should love him. Not only God loving us, that we all, everyone is desire that God should love him or her, but God desires, and God is so interested in those that love him and show love, that they are loved towards him. Look at what the word of God says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And you will love the Lord God with all your soul, with all your might, with all everything you have in life, with all your money, with all your time, with all your resources, with all your everything going for you. You must love God. If you want God to love you, don't deceive yourself. Because God desires to be loved. And what of God says also again in 10 12 of the book of Deuteronomy, He said, We should serve God. With all our heart. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. You see, we need to we need to be blunt and tell ourselves the truth. If we really desire God's love, there's always a price to pay. And now, Israel, what had the Lord thy God required of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to love him, serve him with all your heart, serve him with all your soul, no reservation. You know you can deceive man, but you cannot deceive God. So God is asking you today that you should make sure that you serve him with all your might, with all your strength, with all your resources, with all your time. No reservation. If you're expecting him to do likewise unto you and give you all the resources that he has ordained for you. And when Jesus Christ, a man made Jesus Christ when Jesus was on the earth and now asked Jesus Christ and asked him and say, Master, which of the commandments is the greatest commandment? It was a very wonderful question. And look at how Jesus Christ responded to the young man in the book of Matthew 22, 36. Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. Master, 
which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Love your Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Love him with everything. Love God with everything you have. Don't love God with reservation. God is asking us that we should love him so he can be able to be our God and do great things in our minds. The song we sang before is in the book of Psalm 42, verse 1 and 2. David was a man after God's own heart. Why? He loved God. He was the one that sang that song in Psalm. As a deer panted after the water, so my soul panted after you. My soul, let me say, my soul is panting after you. The way a deer panted after the water. What's the position of your mind towards God? What place have you given God in your life? Is a question that only you can answer. So we should be able to know and follow through because you can you are not losing anything. You are not losing anything when you are serving God the way you're supposed to serve God. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, the word of God says, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered the heart of man. What God has prepared for those that love him. God has prepared a lot of things for those that love him. And those things are not things that are in existence. Eyes have not seen those things. They are not tokumbo. They are things that have, that, that have never even existed in the eyes of men. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered the heart of man. What God has prepared for those that love him. Don't you want to be part of the kingdom like that? That God will give you what has never existed. But the qualification is love. Be desperate for God. Love God. You are losing nothing for doing that. You see, when David was being favored, a lot of people now became jealous and said, ah, why David? David, look at what David... No, the man understood God very well. And God understood also the position of his heart. He did not serve God with pretense. He served God with all his life and all his time. He was ready to die for God. Look at what he was telling God, and God did not say, no, David, my son, you are lying. Psalm 139. If you go to verse 21. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. He said, listen, God, David said, listen, I hate those that hate you. Anybody that hate you without doing me anything, as long as they hate you, I hate them. I don't want to see them. Anybody that hate you, God, I hate them. He said, put perfect hatred. I hate anybody that hates you. Be this pray for God. Be desperate. And that's why God hate anybody that hates David. That even when David committed sin, God said he clean other people. God was angry, but he did not want to vent it on David. Where will he find such a person again? You become so precious in the eyes of God that God will not... He, when Nathan came and told David, listen, you are the man, that man that took one sheep, that one, what his neighbor has, that had 20 sheep, that you say he should be killed. You are the one. David said, ah, God will kill me now. I've even judged myself. Nathan said, you can die. Yo. God will not kill you. But God, because you have opened the door for the enemies of God to blaspheme against God, God is going to now deal with your family, but you are not going to die. When David committed the sin of numbering Israel, Israel, he was one that numbered Israel. Joab even warned him, don't do it. This is against God's will. He said, go ahead. Let somebody else try it now. 
Instead of God killing David, God now started bringing plague. Other people started dying. David even told God, God, I am the one. I am the one that committed this sin. Leave these people, kill me. God said, I can't kill you. I can't kill you. You are too precious to me. The anger of God concerning what David has done, he started venting it to another people. Be desperate for God. There are people that you don't cause so. I'm telling you, if you are watching this clip and you are a, a witch or you are evil, you mind yourself, even as a Christian, there are people that are too precious in the eyes of God. If you cause them, if you cause them, then you have an automatic cause will boomerang upon you. It shall not be you in Jesus' name, but I'm telling you what is a fact and the truth. There are people that are precious. When the word of God is saying in the book of uh, uh, Psalm 91, you see, a thousand shall fall by their side, ten thousand by their right hand, but she shall not come near you. If you think it's not human, they are human beings, so those people that are falling are human beings. God is ready to secure his own. God is ready to kill entire people to make sure that his own stands. Be desperate for God. Leave this modern day Christianity following God with Jelenke and try just to, no sacrifice. You just want to follow God. You can't follow God without sacrifice. The sacrifice you're making for God is, the, is, is how God will evaluate whether you like him or not. Nobody follows God and, follow the, follow, and God recommends such a person without sacrifice. Be desperate for God. It's a good thing. Desperation is good in one thing, and that is to be desperate for God. That's what the word of God is telling us this, this night. I just pray that God will open understanding of people so that we'll be able to understand it and enjoy the benefit. Because the benefits are much. If you go to the book of Psalm, uh, Isaiah 65, you see that word. Every one of us desires this prophetic word from God. Everyone, everybody on earth desires it. You see, but it's meant for some people only. Sixty-five, twenty-four, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I have heard. I think it's a very good prophetic word that everybody will claim. I claim it in Jesus' name. But let me tell you the people that God is addressing in this place. Let's go back to the same Isaiah 65 verse 10. Look at what it says. And Sharon shall be a field of flocks and the valley of Acre, a place for the hills to lie down in for my people that have sought me. This promises, promise is made for those, not just that place. If you go down, you see a lot of promises that God made. They shall build houses. They shall inhabit. They shall plant my yard. They shall enjoy it. All these promises are made for only those that sought God, that seek for God. Those that just pray for God are the ones that before, before they call. That's why you see sometimes if you are walking with God and you are walking with desperation with God, you see that most of the times what you are still thinking in the heart, God will do it. You don't need long prayer points. You don't need long, long fasting before God can hear you. No. You are just thinking about something. I wish that this thing should happen. You have not even committed it to prayers. Before you know it will happen. Those are, that's, that's the improvement of this scripture. Why? You need to be desperate for God. That is how to go the best of God. That is how God can manifest himself without any form of uh, 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 long prayers and fasting. You see, those that are very zealous for God, they enjoy God. There was a young man, his name was Phineas. He was the son of Aaron. When the children of Israel started polluting themselves with uh, the Moabite women, polluting themselves, God was very angry because they started worshipping the God of Moabite. They started committing adultery with the Moabite women and Moabite men. They were mixing up and God told them to be separate. They refused. God was very angry. And God now started, well, told Moses that he was going to finish the entire Israel and Moses was interceding. And 24,000 men died. 24,000 Israelis died because of this plague one day. Phineas now came. 
and one of the children of Israel came with the, 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 the wife or the, or the girlfriend. In presence of Moses, carried the woman and just passed. And when Phineas saw it, the word of God said, Phineas went and took javelin. And now killed that woman and killed the man. And God was too much happy about the zeal of this young man. On how this guy was so desperate for him. And God blessed him above measure. And promised him priesthood. Priesthood. Number chapter 25. Look at what happened there. Number chapter number 25. I read um, 11 to 13. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priests, had turned my wrath away from the children of Israel while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consume not the children of Israel in my, in my jealousy. Wherefore, say, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. He said, Phineas, I'm going to give you everlasting priesthood because of what you have done. Because of your zealousness towards me. 24,000 men has to die. While Phineas received the, the blessings of, of, a, of, a, of, of a zealous man. And God commended him. We need to be zealous. Be desperate for God. That's the topic, topic of, the, of, the, of the world that we're hearing today. Be desperate for God. Like I said, David was a very zealous man. Psalm 69 verse 1, look at what he said. Because the secret of great men is in their stories. When you study the life of David, you understand why David he lived the kind of life he lived and how God handled him with a lot of qualities. 69 verse 9 of book of Psalm. For the zeal of thy house had eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. The zeal of your house has eaten me up. David was eaten up by the zeal of God. So the word of God is, is telling us this night about how we should be very desperate for God. And he mentions something here that is very sacrosanct to what we are discussing this night. In the book of Psalm 119, look at what he says and how he was feeling about God. David was a man, really, after God's own heart. Psalm 119, verse 39. One one nine verse one thirty nine instead. Now I read. My my zeal has consumed me, because my enemies have forgotten thy words. My zeal has consumed me because people, you know, how many times have you felt that? Ah, look at the way people are misbehaving against God. They speak a lot of things against God. Is it touching your heart? David said, like, my zeal has consumed me because the people have forgotten your words. And that's why my zeal now has, has, has seriously consumed me. Do you know it was the zeal of the Lord that consumed David when he came in the word of God in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. He came to the battlefield and he heard Goliath shouting and ranting, I defy the army of Israel. And David looked at him. Look at this, look at this empty vessel. Uncircumcised Philistines. Defying the armies, armies of the living God. And David confronted him. If you go to 25 and 45, uh, 26 and 45 of that book of 1 Samuel, you see that David kept on telling, telling this, this man, Goliath. He said, one of the reasons why I'm coming to you is that you have defied the armies of the living God. 
Saul will hear that, will hear what, uh, what uh, uh, um, uh, this man, Goliath, was saying. Saul was not moved. All the children of Israel, they heard it, they were not moved. But David heard it and said, why? Why should somebody talk to my God like this? Why should I not circumcise Philistine? Is, I would rather die than living to see this thing happening. Let me go. I can't, I can't bear it. I can't bear what this man is saying about our God. No wonder he went to that place and he came out successfully. Because he was desperate. God never allowed anyone that is desperate for him to be abandoned to, in, the, in the battlefield. Be desperate for God. That's the major word God is speaking on to us today. We should be very careful. And be very careful. You see, when Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ demands for love. You see, when Jesus Christ died and resurrected, he appeared unto his disciple. He was still on earth. He has not resurrected. You know, he was. He has not resurrected. He has not uh, risen up, but he was resurrected. When Peter looked around and did not see the, the what was happening, and he looks as if ah, it seems that we have wasted time with Jesus. I said, let's let's go back to our, 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 our normal businesses. He said, I go a fishing, and John said, I go a fishing. All of them say, I go a fishing with you. They went and brought the, the, the boat and the net that they have abandoned before and washed their net and wanted to, uh, went into fishing back. And Jesus Christ came back and saw them fishing. And he was looking at them. These were the people I stayed with three and a half years. I taught, with, I taught them. I, I handed over the gospel that we reached onto the whole world. These people have abandoned the gospel. They have gone to fishing back. And I now call them children, you have meat. Even in that place they went, they came without anything. You see, when you are going outside God, you will suffer. It's not a cause. But your life will not make meaning when God is not around you. I don't know how to be economic with the truth. I'm telling the word of God. If God does not watch over the city, the, 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 the watchman will level. If God did not build a, build, 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 build a house, let, let Bricklayer go. Let him go and build. They went into that place. They toiled all night the way they toiled when they caught in the book of Luke chapter 5. They caught nothing. And I said, cast your net. Come and see where you put your net and get it. When they now get it, it was John that discovered. He said, Peter, this is master. This must be master. And Peter jumped into the water because he was naked. At the end of the day, he came up. He said, bring fish. And when they came, the brought fish they were eating. Jesus Christ looked at them. At this the people I'm going to hand over the gospel to? Are these the people that I'm going to leave the gospel that will reach onto the world that has to be there until rapture comes again? No. And I decided to, uh, to, to, to prove whether there was love at all between him and Peter. I remember at that point in time, Peter has denied him three times. And he needed three times love to counter the three times denier that he did for, 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 for Jesus. And Peter now was there preparing the fish as they were roasting the fish and eating the fish. And Jesus Christ, book of John chapter 21, verse 15, he asked Peter, Lovest thou me, Simon, Simon, Simon Bajona? Do you love me at all? Peter said, I love you. Verse 16 of the same book of John, he asked him again, Simon Bajona, Lovest thou me? Peter said, I love you, Master. You know I love you. The third time Jesus asked him again, because Jesus was looking for love. He wants to know those that love him. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me than this? And Peter said, ah, Master, you can see my heart. You can see that I love you. First of all, he has countered that denier. The three times he denied him, he countered it with love. And Jesus Christ now said, take care of my sheep, take care of my lamb. Jesus desires to be loved. So this Christianity that we are having today will not help us. Convenient Christianity is not taking us anywhere. Jesus is calling us today about loving him. That is the major reason for the world we are hearing today. Let's not behave like Peter. That when he saw things that were bigger. Huh? In the book of Matthew chapter 26, when he saw the way they were beating Jesus, when he saw the suffering Jesus Christ was going through, he thought that that was the end. 
He now recanted, say I don't know him, and he denied him thrice. Thank God that he let us stage a comeback, unlike Judas, that could not. Let's not behave like Peter. But let's behave like Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego. That were threatened by Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel chapter 3. And they told, oh king, and they call him by name. They did not even give him an accolade again. Say, oh ye Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful in this matter. If you put us inside the fire, the God we are serving is going to take us out. But even if he does not, we are not going to bow down to your God. Did they die? No, they did not die. Nobody that trusts in God will ever be a victim in the battle. They came out. Go and look at that book of Daniel uh, chapter 3. He ended up in promotion. Anytime you have need to be desperate for God. No, people may say that you are mad. People may look at you that you are a fool. But it's better to be a fool for Christ. In fact, if you have not even become a fool for Christ, you have not started serving him. At the end of the day, Shedra, Mishra, Abadnego, go and look at the book of Daniel chapter 3. What ended up the, 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 the chapter was that they were promoted. Check the book of Daniel chapter 6. When they say that nobody should ever pray to any other God except the king, then they say, no way. I will only pray to only one God, and God the God of Israel. And he opened up his window the way he usually do it. And he faced Jerusalem and he prayed as usual. He was caught in prayer. Why he was caught in prayer, he did not deny that he did not, he did not pray. The king tried to, to save him by telling him, Daniel, say you did not pray so I can save you. Say, listen, I prayed, and if you allow me, I'm still going to pray more and more and more. So I, I, I'll keep praying. I don't pray to kings, I pray to God. They put him in lions there. The last time I went to check, nothing happened to him. But those that put him, all of them died with their families inside the lion there. The question today is that, are you desperate for God? How desperate are you towards God? What position have you given God in your life? Is it only when problem comes that you remember God? Some people, they like to, they like consulting God like a medical doctor. You know, anytime they see a black man in the hospital, he's almost dead. He has tried all manner of medicines, he has failed. So you now come to doctor. So whenever doctor has no friends, especially Nigeria doctors, they don't have friends. You know why? Because he knows that you don't come for checkup. Before you come, you have tried everything. When everything fails, you just come. That's how some people follow God as a consultant. They can only meet, look at God or check how, how far and also think about prayer when they are in need and they are, they are so, they are, they are, they are, the, the, the issue of life has overwhelmed them. But I have news for you, that's not the best time to seek God. Because God is not a, a God, you can't deceive God. Be desperate for God. That's the word God is speaking unto us today. And I pray that I can be able to take advantage of that. Not just when it's convenient. When Joseph had the opportunity of enjoying in Potiphar's house, the wife of Potiphar gave, gave him the, 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 the condition. He said, no, your condition is not good. My master loves, loves me. He gave me in charge of all that he had. Even his account, he does not know how much he has. And the only thing he will throw from me is, your, is, is you because you are his wife. How do you want me to do this wickedness and sin against God? I can't do it, irrespective of the promises you are giving unto me. Did he suffer for it? Yes. He was desperate. He was put in prison, convicted of rape, death. But he was there. The last time I checked, I saw him in the palace. That is what the price and the reward of being desperate for God. Go through the scripture. Nobody has been desperate for God and God abandoned such a person. So the choice is yours. John Job was suffering. The wife came and saw him and said, you are behaving like, look, look at you. You are looking like a freak. Curse God and die. You are suffering. And Job said, no, you are talking like one of those foolish women. When I was buying new cars for you every birthday, giving you the best that life has to offer, you are enjoying as the first lady of the richest man on earth. It did not cause God. I can't cause him. 
And Job chapter 14, verse 14, say, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time shall I wait until my change comes. Did the change came? Last time I checked, the change came. And he became, again, the most richest man on earth. Not just that. God of God said, the children that he lost, he had the most beautiful daughters on earth at that point in time. And God gave him longevity to be able to see his children, children, and children. That's the reward of being desperate for God. So the word of God is telling us today, in a nutshell, that we should be desperate for God. We're not losing anything. Instead, we are gaining everything when we become desperate for God. So I want us to pray today that God take away lukewarmness spirit in my life. Deliver me from every form of lukewarmness spirit. Spirit that is serving God with convenience. Spirit that is only when problem comes, I will go to consult God. Father, take it away. I pray today that you kindle your fire upon us, that we might be able to stand, even when it's even to the risk of our lives, we can be able to say, no, I will stay and see the end until Jesus is established. Make our lives, O oh Lord, to be a reflection that even unbelievers will look at, they will know that, yes, God is alive, that these people are not serving God because of what God can give them, but they are serving God, having the understanding that He is their creator. Thank you, Lord. We will never compromise you, O oh Lord, where it matters. We will never compromise your word. Give us grace, O oh Lord, to tarry, to stand, even when the wind is blowing everyone away now. A contrary wind is blowing. A lot of people are compromising the gospel, twisting the gospel, and misinterpreting the gospel, diluting the gospel. Lord, give us grace to stand by your truth and to uphold your truth, that your name shall be glorified. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus Christ, most powerful name, we pray. Amen. Now, I want to pray for you. If you have not met with Jesus Christ in your life as personal Lord and Savior, I want to pray for you. Anywhere you are. If you have not met with Christ, you are running a risk. Ask Jesus to enter your life today and perfect all that concerns you. Jesus, ask for forgiveness of sins. He will forgive you if you ask for forgiveness. He said, if you forsake your sin, it's faithful and just. If you confess your sin, it's faithful and just to forsake you, to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Ask Jesus to enter your life today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for forgiveness of those things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let me say this prayer of faith after me. We confess Jesus Christ with heart, man, believeth unto righteousness, with mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me at the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me from my sins and Satan to serve the living God. Today I believe I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, your grace has brought these ones. Let the same grace preserve them until the day of your coming. I pray, Lord Jesus, that your grace, O Lord, shall come upon them and the zeal of your house shall consume them. That they shall be able to stand as firebrands for you globally. Thank you, Holy Spirit, and take all the glory. In Jesus Christ, most powerful name, I pray. Amen. I want to pray for you, wherever you are. Those that desire healings this night. I want to pray for you. Those that are being attacked by evil forces of darkness, I want to pray for you. Wherever you are right now, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, O Lord, for everyone, O Lord, Father, Lord, that is watching, O Lord, this message globally, I pray, O Lord, over their lives, Concerning every sickness, you say God has given Jesus a name that is above every other name on the earth, beneath the earth, and in the heavens. That at the name mentioned on the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is God to the glory of God the Father. You sickness, the name you are called is below the name of Jesus Christ. I command your total alienation, total uprooting, total death. Dry off from your roots 
in the lives of these ones. You spirit of glaucoma, you spirit of migraine, you spirit of kidney, kidney issue, liver problem, you powers of, of evil arthritis. I command your total uprooting now. The word of God says, whosoever that defiled the temple shall be destroyed because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Because you have defiled that body by entering into those bodies, let destruction of God come upon you now. You spirit of diseases, affliction, ailment, sicknesses, I command you now and be uprooted. Let those bodies be healed. Every harm these sicknesses and affliction have done over those bodies, let there be healing now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus Christ's most powerful name, we pray. Amen. And I pray for those that are broken hearted, O oh Lord. Father, heal every broken hearted. Those that are moving towards committing any form of suicide or depression. Lord, heal those hearts, O oh Lord. Comfort those souls. And I pray today in the, in the state of, of, of River State, in the city of Portacot, every forces of darkness operational in this city, I stand as God's oracle. Every power of darkness that has been operational, that has kept the people in bondage, by the power that is in the word of God, the word of God say he confirmed the word of his servant and counsel of his messengers. The other day also he said, I shall decree a thing and he shall establish. Your powers, your marine power that is operational in River State, in Port Harcourt. Today I stand as God's oracle. I arrest you in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God says in the book of Jude, that angels that kept not their first estate but left their own habitation has they an everlasting change under darkness until the day of that judgment. Your forces and occultic, occultic powers in this state, I arrest you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command you to go into captivity. And I pray the blood of Jesus Christ, every all the people of God in River State that are in bondage, I decree your total liberation. I decree your total independence from every forces of darkness. I declare River State as for Jesus. River State is for Jesus. There's no contention. Any power contending River State with Jesus Christ, I arrest you now. By the power that is in the name of Jesus, go into captivity. In Jesus Christ's most powerful name, I pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and take all the glory. In Jesus Christ's most powerful name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you, and God perfect all that concerns you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Peace unto you. Maranatha.